on OSRC News at 7. Petrol price rises as Naira continues to weaken against a dollar. Ondo coordinating units assures indigent residents of inclusion in federal government's policies. Civil Defence Corps bust bank accounts trading syndicate. And in sport, 2026 Commonwealth Games in doubt after Australian CD cancelled hosting plans. Thank you very much for joining us tonight on the news at 7 on Oresarasa Television. I am Oye Wumi Ayini Bara. Long queues are resurfaced at petrol stations in our Korea understate capital following reports of the takeoff of a new price regime by the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited. Fuel sold as high as, as 550 naira per litre in the state capital as motorists lament the hardship. Meanwhile, Vice President Kashim Shatima has met with the NNPCL Group Managing Director Meli Kiari over the adjustment in the prices of petroleum. The adjustment was effected across the country on what Mr. Kiari called market forces. Outcome of the meeting is not yet made public. In the meantime, the Nigerian Union of Journalists, NUJ, says it is alarmed at the just announced increase in the pound price of petrol to 670 naira per litre. The development, according to the union, has already triggered astronomical increases in transportation costs, with prices of food items serving almost beyond the reach of many citizens. NUJ says while it applauds the decision to remove the costly subsidies on fuel, the union, however, cautioned against a hasty implementation of the policy without putting mitigating measures in place to cushion the excruciating effect. According to the National Secretary of the Union, Shuaibu Usman, the union is saddened by the fact that today most people can hardly commute to work or other places of business without too much stress. Indigent in Ondo State will be the major beneficiary of the federal government 8,000 policy for the period of six months to cushion the effect of fuel subsidy removal. Coordinator State Operation Coordinating Unit Ondo State, Olao Lua Bankoli, confirmed this during an interview with Oresarasi in Akredi Ondo State Capital. According to him, beneficiaries from Ondo State are already adequately represented in the scheme of Moriola Ongiji. Has details. Among the effective measures adopted by governments to address poverty in any society is by reaching out to the needy through palliatives. Nigeria is not taking the back seat on this as various measures are being rolled out by federal and state governments to address economic hardships of the masses. In Nigeria, one of such initiatives is through the Social Investment Intervention Scheme. To cushion the impact of the fuel subsidy remover on Nigerians, President Bola Tinubu announced an 8,000 naira palliative for 12,000 million vulnerables. The money could be paid for a period of six months. Former President, National Council of Women's Society, Ondo State, Jumoke, a borrowed loaded initiative, noting that it will help ameliorate some of the challenges occasioned by the subsidy remover. Looking at 8,000 for indigent household is minimal, but at the same time, it has not happened this way before. We have to start from somewhere, not minding the minimal amount. Uh, we have to have it in our mind that it's starting with this minimal amount. And as time goes on, there can be increase. It's always better to have patience when we want good governance, when we want to enjoy the government. An analyst, Lekon Olajobi, harped on the need for the palliative to get to those really in need. It was supposed to be a social investment intervention scheme. 
and that was the cash transfer that was meant. At that time, it has nothing to do with the subsidy remover. But now, the government of this new government wants to use that opportunity, you know, to use it as palliative, which is not anything bad. But, you know, reasons that people have given is that, well, uh, out of the 133 million Nigerians, which, of course, are undergoing or have been affected by multidimensional poverty, uh, some of them will benefit from this. I think it's about 12 million households. But outside of those 12 million households, just as we're asking, what are the modalities? How do we check them out and all that? In Ondo State, the ministry in charge of this scheme, the State Operation Coordinating Unit, SOCO, said it will ensure total inclusion of indigent citizens. According to the State Coordinator, Olalu Wabankoli, 213,000 households, making 720,000 members, are already in the state's database. The mayor of civilization of any community, of any society, is how well we care for the poor and vulnerable among us. And so that is the whole essence why governments all over the world at every point in time, you, you try to know that people that are poor and vulnerable in your society to reach out to them. We have over 720,000 household members in our database, over, a little over 720,000 households in our database. But it is not for us in Nondo State here at the Soku to now say that this is the number of the people that will, will benefit. So we are waiting for national at the national level to, to do their location. So and like I, I told you earlier on, every state is going to have its own uh, fair share. Every every state has a sort of population. There are there are scientific means of ensuring that every state gets its fair share. He also called for the support of well to do residents in complementing government's efforts. It's not the first time that people, governments at both federal and state level reaching out to people. But the, the flurry that has been generated is because this current 8,000 people has been linked to the issue of subsidy removal. So that is just the case. So uh, our in Ondo State here, we are going to have our own fair share of it because the this office, we are not just working at the level of the state alone. We have an office that we report to in Abuja, which aggregates all the data from the state. The office is known as National Social Coordinating Office, NASCO, in Abuja. So that office in Abuja is always liaising with all the states in Nigeria, including the federal capital territory. President Bola Tinubu had earlier approached the House of Representatives seeking approval of an $800 million loan request, earlier presented by the administration of former President Mohamedou Buhari for the Social Safety Net Program. The morning, when disbursed to vulnerable households according to President Inubu, would have a multiplier effect on about 60 million individuals. Omori Olahmogiji, OSRC News. Poor lifestyle, family traits and environmental factors have resulted in the reduction of human longevity and a shoot up in the number of patients requiring medical attention or surgery. Hence, the current lifestyle demands preventive health care and immediate treatment if necessary. This has prompted Ondo State Agency for the Control of AIDS to run medical checks for members of staff of the Ondo State Media Group. Olusheye Akinwalire tells us more. People always visit medical doctors only when they feel unwell or have a life-threatening medical condition. With today's fast-paced lifestyle, one's health often takes the back seats with unhealthy diet, lack of exercise, inadequate sleep taking a toll in the long run. For keeping track of the general health and preventing medical conditions that may be slowly developing in any part of the body, doctors always crave routine full-body checkups, including Test for cholesterol, heart disease, diabetes, and blood pressure, regardless of how healthy one may be. This is why it is important to have a regular medical checkup as determining the status of the bodily functions can help to identify any abnormalities before they can worsen, display symptoms, and pose a significant risk, which can reduce complications that may lead to loss of life and also helps you reduce medical costs. The public relations officer on the state agency for the control of AIDS, Mrs. Bose de Okoyemi, stressed the importance of regular checkups to detect any life-threatening condition in good time and receive medical treatment to prevent further complications. We have come to introduce integrated HIV testing services where the staff will screen for their HIV and know their status and also go for their sugar test and also know for their um, and also know their BP. 
so that they will not reinfect other peoples within the communities. The acting OSA Officer Director of Finance and Administration, Mrs. Mudukwe Aragweshola, lauded the move by Odisaka as Jacobs help keep track of one's health status and monitor any changes in the body. It's better for us to check our status, to know what to do and not what to do. Members of staff, Mr. Akintude Akinshimola and Mrs. Shade Ogidon, said the test will leave room for improvement in overall health status of workers. The one very good thing is the fact that it's not limited to HIV alone. Uh, people will know whether they are hypoglycemic or hyperglycemic. They will know whether they have high blood pressure. So once those are detected, the next thing is to consult a consultant so that you know uh, the next thing to do. So I give kudos to those who are behind uh, this exercise and I hope that the time frame for it will be regular. In the space of some months, we, we get tested for uh, HIV, AIDS, um, to know our blood sugar, blood pressure and all these routine tests. Yeah, it, it's good. At least some people will get to know the state of their health and uh, what for their steps to take. It is important to note that the main factors that contribute to a healthy body include good nutrition, proper lifestyle and regular exercise. Olusheye Akinwalire, Oresaus News. You are still watching Oresaus News at 7 after the break. Civil Defense Corps, Bost Bank Accounts tr Trading Syndicates. Please do join us then. Win an all express bay trip to Disneyland in the Indomie Golden Magnet promo. To participate, just buy the Indomie 70 gram pack and look for the magnet inside. Log into www.indomie.ng forward slash golden magnet promo to fill in your details and enter your unique magnet code. All the golden magnet winners will get to experience the wonders of Disneyland. Silver magnet winners stand a chance to win amazing prizes. Every pack of Indomie you buy comes with your favorite indomitable magnet. Terms and conditions apply. Indomie, tasty nutrition, good for you. Take it from me, the mind-blowing way to do things is the Glow LTE advanced way. When you stream, it's like you in the drama itself. <laughs> when you make calls, you reach where others can. Cookie! Doing business is like running Wall Street from your street. And when you play, I did beat you guy. We'll see about that. It's like traveling the world without moving an inch. Is that Toby in your room? You can download in the blink of an eye in 4K. Go, go. And when you go for your dreams, it's like running with the strength of three nations behind you. Glow LTE Advanced, the power of three data networks in one. Get a Glow SIM or dial star 301 hash. to Borkiam Parks and Gardens, the epitome of standard and luxury living. Nested amidst nature's beauty, this exquisite real estate development offers you of comfort, elegance and tranquility. Convenience and accessibility are paramount at Borkiam Parks and Gardens. Children from field and recreational centers are not excluded in this world-class aesthetic estate situated at Aisu Road, Oodiede, Oshogbo in Oshun State. Don't miss your chance to be a part of this extraordinary community. Contact our sales team today at Borkiam Parks and Garden. Your dream home awaits you. Adron Homes. Building cities, communities and homes. breakfast right then you need all the nutrients that will hold you tight then stay in power you find it all in peak then every move you make big statue all the way in. and the beat goes on power on every morning with our peak protein breakfast to make the most of every day peak reach for your peak Your 
breakfast right, baby. You need all the nutrients that will hold you tight, baby. Stay in power, you find it all in peak, baby. Every move you make, big statue all the way, baby. And the beat goes on. Power on every morning with a peak protein breakfast to make the most of every day. Peak, reach for your peak. Glad to have you back. You can watch us live on our website www.orsrc.ng or follow us on Facebook, OSRC TV Undo, and on YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel, OSRC TV Undo. Poultry farms across Nigeria are currently shutting down operations due to persistent hike and the price of maize. Based on this, the Poultry Association of Nigeria Pan said the poultry subsector in the country was adding for a crash if the federal government fails to salvage the industry. Pan said it sees aware the government has declared a state of emergency on food security but stressed that the situation of the poultry industry calls for an urgent intervention to save the industry from total collapse. An imports ban on maize, which is a major component of poultry feeds, has translated to a rise in the price of eggs for the average Nigerian. Maxwell Lakoje and Adijumo David have been arrested by the Kantal Terrorism Unit of NSCDC Command for fraudulently obtaining account details for criminal use. A statement by Daniel Aidemebo, NSCDC Undo Command Public Relations Officer, said suspects have confessed to, the involved, to be involved in buying and selling of bank accounts from unsuspecting members of the public under various guise. Investigation activities began when one Mr. Luwali a car dealer alleged that sum of 1,500,000 naira paid into his account was stolen by cyber criminals overnight. Both suspects also confessed to have equally obtained and procured details of other bank accounts from other individuals and sold same to persons whom they claimed unusually placed regular demands for search. Investigation is still ongoing to determine the involvement of bank officials and information technology professionals in this new cybercrime activities. The traditional ruler of Ezuhu Umamadi Unguru Autonomous Community in Abo Mbeze local government area of Imo State, Eze James Namdi, has been gruesomely murdered by unidentified gunmen. The incident occurred at his home in Abo Mbeze local government area. Imo State Police Public Relations Officer Enri Okoye who confirmed the killing said the traditional ruler was shot multiple times when the gunman invaded his house. The traditional ruler was later rushed to a nearby hospital for medical attention but was unfortunately not able to survive. The PPRO, however, said the Imo State Commissioner of Police, Mohamed Badi, has condemned the incident in its entirety and has set up a high-powered team to investigate the case to ensure that the perpetrators of the Destali Act are arrested and made to face the full wrath of the law. And Nigerian Air Force fighter jets have destroyed the Islamic State's West African province hideout, killing 11 terrorists in the Lake Chad, Tambo's Axis, of Burundi State. The terrorists were neutralized after credible intelligence indicating their presence in Koloram and Arena Chiki camps. A counter-insurgency expert and security analyst in the Lake Chad region, Zagozola Makama, disclosed in Meriduguri that the fighter jets bombarded the camps and killed about 11 terrorists, including a commander in the region. Security agencies confirmed that the terrorists were neutralized by airstrikes while trying to cross the Lake Chad to rejoin their colleagues at Tumbon Rego. The European Union ambassador to Nigeria, Samuel Isopi, says the EU has awarded postgraduate master's study scholarships to 125 Nigerian youth selected from various universities across the country. The EU ambassador made this known in Abuja, saying no fewer than 500 Nigerian youth have so far benefited from the 
Eramos in the scholarship program, which began in 2019. According to her, the 135 Nigerian hour days for 2023 were selected from 15,000 applications from across the world. Isopi explained that the fully funded scholarship program would run for between 12 and 24 months at universities across 21 of the 27 member states of the EU, adding that each hour day would have the opportunity to study in at least three different universities during the duration of the program. The EU ambassador, however, lamented the lack of awareness of the scholarship program by Nigerian youth, noting that the country had a higher potential despite the global competitiveness for the awarded scholarships. On the foreign scene, a year after South Korea vowed to step up readiness for extreme weather driven by climate change, experts say no enough work has been done even as greater volumes of sudden and torrential rains are expected in coming decades. 40 or more people have lost their lives in less than a week of ever rains, including 13 who died when floodwaters trapped them in an underpass, casting doubt on the country's effort to prepare for localized and intense downpours. Akintunde Akishimola has the detail. A year ago, South Korea vowed to step up its readiness for extreme weather driven by climate change. But in the past week alone, dozens of people have died as heavy rain hampered the country. And it's causing doubt in South Korea's preparedness as the threat of more torrential dampers loom large. So what has been done so far? Well, experts say not enough. Some believe that spending remains too focused on recovery, not prevention. Jung Chang Sam is an engineering professor at Indok University in Seoul, specializing in water resources. He says prevention is crucial to minimizing damage and lives lost, but it's often neglected because the benefits are not immediately obvious to politicians and those in government. People like to use expressions such as rapid response, emergency recovery. It is wrong. Climate disasters are already underway. So now if you put money into prevention projects, you can do it at half the cost of recovery projects. It's not just flooding that's posing a risk. South Korea is mountainous and urban development has left many regions vulnerable to landslide. That's why readiness to respond to extreme weather has not been up to speed. A 2020 study by the Korea Meteorological Administration found that property damage costs and casualties from extreme weather have tripled compared to the yearly average of the previous decade. The past week's victims include 20 killed or missing in mountainous North Yansang province, many from landslide. Jung said authorities who were too slow to act on available information and who had not created a system to alert residents could be blamed for the casualties. On Monday, President Yoon sung yeol echoed a call he made last year when flooding in August from the heaviest rain to hit Seoul in 115 years paralyzed commercial areas and inundated low-lying neighborhoods in the affluent Gangnam district. Officials have also promised to spend more on natural disaster prevention. The country committed about $1.6 billion in 2022, 20% more than what was spent the previous year. Akintunde Akinshimola for SRC News. In sport, the 2026 Commonwealth Games are in doubt after the Australian states of Victoria cancelled its plans to host due to budget blowouts. The Commonwealth Games Federation, CJF, struggled to find a host before Victoria volunteered in April 2022. But Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews said the projected cost had now tripled and become well and truly too much for the state to bear. The Commonwealth Games are a multi-sport tournament that takes place every four years with Nigeria and many African nations as members. 
And with that sports story, we conclude the news tonight. But before we go, a quick look at the top stories. We told you that the price of Premier Motor Spirit, popularly known as Petro, has shot up amid continued decline of the Naira and growing inflation in Nigeria. On the state operation coordinating units, as a short indigent resident of inclusion in federal government's 8,000 Naira palliative. The Civil Defense Corps has busted a bank account trading syndicate in under state. And in sport, we told you that the 2026 Commonwealth Games has been thrown into turmoil following the withdrawal of Australian City Victoria from hosting. And that's the news tonight. Thank you very much for your time. Good evening.